Hello and welcome to another episode of the Drew Roth Show alongside Purdue Soccer Head Coach Drew Roth. I'm the team's Communications Director, Charlie Healy. Boilermakers are coming off a 3-1 victory at Nebraska to open Big Ten play on Sunday. Drew, as you look back on that win, there are a lot of things that stand out, but what impressed you most about the team's performance on the road? Well, I think that, uh, you know, obviously it was a overall team performance that we needed. Uh, Nebraska is a difficult team to play, uh, especially at their place. So we knew we had our work cut out, um, you know, started a little slow, but, uh, you know, Emily came up with the goal and that really sparked us um, uh, for, for a few minutes. But uh, to Nebraska's credit, they uh, scored off a restart and that kind of uh, put us back even and, and we knew it was going to be that type of game. You know, nothing, nothing comes easy in the Big Ten, as we know. So. Um, Kept uh, kept working at it, and at halftime, you know, talked about some things, and felt like, uh, you know, technically we were playing well, um, but I, I felt like, you know, a little bit more uh, more energy, a little bit, a little bit uh, different attitude if you're going to get that win on the road in the Big Ten. And I thought the second half we made that adjustment and came out and really played well. Um, obviously, uh, you know, in order to uh, get big wins in conference, you need some of your uh, big players to, to step up when when you need it, and I thought there was no better example than. Mobova uh, making the saves that she made, the one in particular, which uh, you know, we've all seen a few times by, by this stage. But uh, not only was it an incredible save, um, you know, off a, off a nice set piece by them, uh, but the, the timing of it was, was crucial. At 1 1, you know, if you go down 2 1 at that point, um, the momentum drastically swings towards towards Nebraska. But um, her, her getting up, you know, upper 90, tipping that ball, getting that save, uh, just kind of sparked our team. And it just, it just, uh, you know, let everybody know that, you know, hey, we, uh, uh, we, we can get this done. You know, we, we need to step up, and, and these are the types of plays other players can make too. And, and I think Emily uh, took it from there. And those, those two goals were really great goals. I uh, love the second goal because it involved a nice combination. Uh, you know, three players involved uh, went from Griff to City Jorte, and then Emily, uh, you know, gets through and you know, uh, puts, it, puts it in. So. That was a huge moment, and then to seal it at, uh, you know, that third goal was crucial because anytime it's two one, the other team's throwing the kitchen yeah. sink at you. You know that uh, you know some, sometimes uh, anything can happen. So that was just uh, you know a great exclamation mark on the day. But uh, uh, what stands out to me is just overall our team uh, just seemed uh, you know mentally and physically tough, and they seemed uh, uh, well prepared for uh, you know what a what a road game the Big Ten brings. And uh, I thought we showed our maturity and our experience. And uh, you know, it, was, it was a total team effort. Defense played really well. Didn't give them a lot of great chances. Dealt a lot with uh, the direct play and things of that nature. Uh, but obviously, those two players, Emily and, and, and Mo, uh, stepping up when we really needed it. And uh, that's uh, that's uh, what you what, what needed this level. And it was uh, it was a big it was a big game for us. Always good to get off on the right foot when we start conference play. Yeah, first uh, one and zero start uh, with a w road win to start the Big Ten season for the Boilermakers since 2017. A lot of things, good things from that game, but it seemed like especially late the Boilermaker, the team really, they still had a lot of energy, a lot of uh, high fitness level late in the match, and that it was nothing, never more apparent than that 90th minute goal from Emily Matthews. Is that another in, uh, positive sign towards your training and the data analysis and, and the conditioning that Wally Becker puts the team through? Absolutely, I think that's that's a big part of it. I think you know, second halves we've we've done really well. Um, you know, obviously we're always trying to play that uh, complete ninety minutes, as we always say. So you know, I think I think first halves actually, you know, we can get off to some better starts. But second half, I think we've made some adjustments, and uh, you know, our team gets gets locked in and um, you know, really uh, have had success in those second halves. And a lot of it, you know, as you mentioned, is, is, is physically. We feel like uh, you know, having really good depth obviously contributes to that. We have several players that we can use, and we don't have to. Uh, you know, run every player you know into the ground for 90 minutes every game, so that really helps. Um, but that conditioning piece is huge. I felt like uh, you know some of our best soccer was the last you know 15 minutes of that match, and uh, you know that's when the games tend to open up a little bit. And uh, if you have players that uh, you know have have that technique, have some good ideas, but yet uh, can also you know keep keep playing at that high level, you know keep keep it in a high gear, then you you you're gonna get some opportunities late in the match, and that's exactly what we did. So um, really good to see, and uh, yeah, I think it's just. A lot of hard work, preparation, and just uh, being mentally tough to do what you have to do to, to get, get the job done. And absolutely, it's, it's paid off. The Boilermakers outscoring their opponents 18 to 7, 12 to 3 in the second half. So you really see that that uh, paying off in the final 45 minutes, and it's uh, 
proved to be beneficial with a 6-1 and 2 record. Talked a little bit about Emily Matthews, but you know the another hat trick for the Boilermakers hers was the seventh in program history, the first in a road match in Big 10 play. What have you seen from her? You know, she has four career goals all in the last three games too. So she's really uh, been able to find the back of the net in the last couple of games as well. You know, I think she's just playing in a great rhythm. You know, things that uh, happen in the attack uh, take some time to develop. You know, that, that coordination, that chemistry, uh, that confidence. And I think, uh, you know, Emily's had the opportunity to work with someone like Sarah Griffith and, and, and kind of, uh, you know, they can play off each other. And um, they're both going to draw a lot of attention now, but it's, it's much harder to stop, uh, you know, two or three players than it is one yeah. player. So I think uh, Emily's just playing in a great rhythm. She's uh, playing with a great attacking mindset. And she's realizing that uh, you know, what our particular team needs is for her to contribute um, you know, goals, assists, uh, creativity. Um, that's something that, that she has the ability to do. So I uh, love the mindset she's playing with. Um, she's really locked in. And as I said, you know, not only does she have all the, the technical ability and the vision, but you know, she was going to goal. She was going to, to seal the deal. She was, she was looking to be aggressive and looking to finish, finish Nebraska off. And, um, when you combine a player with her tools and her ability, and then you uh, have her reading the game like she is now, and then having that aggressive mindset, uh, you've got a very special player on your hands. So, uh, really uh, excited about what she's doing, and uh, you know, she's fulfilling that role as that playmaker for us uh, tremendously at this time. Yeah, absolutely. Her high level of play is paying off to named to the top drawer soccer team of the week and the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week this week as well. Looking ahead, a couple days off, but back on the road at Illinois on Thursday night. What do you expect from a from a uh, Fighting Illini squad on, on Thursday? Yeah, well, you know, we're familiar with Illinois. Obviously, um, you know, have uh, had some great games over the years, very competitive matches. So, um, you know, another another road test for us, and uh, you know, I'm sure they'll, they'll be up for it. So. Anytime you go on the road against a good opponent in the Big Ten, uh, you just have to be ready to play at your best, you know. And I think that's the key: is just focus on uh, full 90 minutes, get off to a good start, and uh, you know, play play our style, play consistently. Um, but uh, you know, the style of play that that, that they play is, uh, you know, we're we're familiar with it, and they they can play direct, they can play indirect, and they have you know a lot of really talented players in the attacking third. So um, you know, we're we're obviously talking way about ways to to you know shut them down, slow them down best as possible and then you know a couple things that you know hopefully we can uh, implement in our in our final third in our attack so um, nothing uh, too out of the ordinary you know just uh, two two good teams uh, uh, ready to compete and uh, you know just uh, excited to get back uh, back out there and um, you know just just trying to get better every game should be a fun one Thursday night in Champaign coming up on the show we're gonna have a couple defenders Scott Skyler Patrick and Lauren Holler on the show first let's talk about Skyler senior uh, has been a really a, an impactful player on the back line her entire career what type of play does she bring I mean it's not hard to see that energy and and what she brings a, to the pitch every game yeah Skyler is a player that uh, you know just brings a physical toughness and a mental toughness uh, just a, uh, a player that uh, you know kind of the heart and soul of our team in the back um, you know that she's willing to put her body on the line uh, to to make a play and get a result and um, anytime you see a player that, that wants to be successful wants to win and uh, is willing to compete at that level um, it absolutely sends a spark to your team and it also kind of you know uh, lets everybody know that uh, you know we're here to compete we're here to yeah. win and uh, if you're not willing to do that then you know maybe maybe this isn't the right team for you so she you know to have players like that set that example um, and set that tone obviously it sends a great message and uh, you know just when you, when you go into play these these great teams that we play with all these great attacking players um, you know it gives you a lot of confidence to know that you have somebody out there that uh, is is ready to compete at the highest level and is willing to do whatever it takes and uh, you know she's she's a great soccer player I mean she she can connect passes um, you know she's she's technical and she reads the game extremely well so you know don't want to diminish those qualities that yeah. she has but it is her uh, her ability to wear her emotions on her sleeve and uh, you know play with that edge and uh, that uh, you know it's a special quality and uh, something that you can't really teach but just loves to compete loves to win and uh, she's been a tremendous player for us through her whole career yeah absolutely it's not not hard to see that you know just a couple minutes on the pitch you you see uh, Skyler's impact and, and wearing that heart on her sleeve but uh, Lauren Holler and a junior transfer first year on the back line has started every match really made a big impact as well what do you like from her yeah Lauren's a very solid player uh, really good defender, you know, defends well in 1v1 situations, 
Uh, you know, she's an athlete, so she can cover ground. You're not going to get uh, behind her very often. Um, she's also very good with the ball. She's comfortable. She's composed. Uh, makes some good decisions. Plays some great entry passes into our forwards, into our nine, which I really like. Um, you know, she can really uh, pin a ball, ping a ball well. You know, keep it on the rug with pace. Um, she can play balls over the top, left foot, right foot. So really an asset. We love our wing backs to uh, uh, be great defensively, obviously, but they also you know need to be good with the ball. And she's just given us a real consistent play out there, and that's that's what you need. You want those defenders that you know what you're going to get every game. And I think she's improved. You know, every every game she's gotten better, and uh, she's someone that uh, you know has just been uh, very reliable and somebody that uh, we know we can count on, and just been a great addition. You know, to come in at this level and, and earn that starting spot um, like she did. And, uh, you know, play the majority of the minutes and, and get the job done for a defense that's done really well. Um, just says a whole lot about her ability um, and her character. You know, she's been a, a really, really positive addition and uh, made, a, made a great impact for us. Yeah, absolutely. Def definitely a quick impact and it has been a great addition, as you said. So, Drew, we'll look forward to seeing you Thursday in Champaign and then again on Sunday here at Folk Field. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Welcome back to the Drew Roth Show. We're joined by senior defender Skylar Patrick, junior defender Lauren Holleran. Thanks so much for joining us. First, let's talk about the defense. You guys have really been two anchors of the back line this year. Skylar, first of all, what is that to be such a pivotal player on the defense and have those the strong defensive moments? What does that mean to you? It means a lot just because there's a lot of talent uh, up top in the Big Ten. So to stop them, Every game, I mean, yeah, there are some mistakes, but I feel like every game that we've played, the defense has gotten better. We've learned from our mistakes, and we just keep on getting stronger. We're thriving for those shutouts. It's coming. We've gotten a couple, but I think we've made real progress in the last games, and we're going to be prepared for the Big Ten and gone against some good forwards. Yeah, absolutely. It's always tough matches in the in the Big Ten against really good opponents. Lauren, you've been one of the newer members to, of the back line. What's that been like to, to be integrated and, and being a vital vital part of that defense? Yeah, it's definitely been a lot to learn, but I mean, I've had some great teammates who have really helped me out and made the transition a lot easier. And like Skylar said, I think like looking from our first exhibition game to now, like the back line is just really on the same page now. We all have each other's back and we've really come a long way. So just excited to see like the more matches to come how much better we continue to grow Skyler fans who come up and come and see you guys at Folk Field it's not hard to see the passion and energy you bring to defense you know they can just see you for two or three minutes and, and see that you bring that for a whole 90 minutes where does that come from and, and is it hard to to bring that every game uh I would no it's it's not hard it's just uh Ever since I've been little, I've always been told I left my heart on the field. It's just uh, <laughs> kind of a quality I have. But it, it comes from, you know, all the people back home. My family, my parents more specifically, have always believed in me and have sacrificed a lot. So the least I can do is just go out every, every game, you know, experience it and give it my all for myself and my parents who, you know, sacrificed so much so I could play a sport. So I got to, I mean, I have the opportunity to play this game that I love. So I just go out there with that mindset every time and give it my all. Awesome. Well, f certainly through the first nine games, you're definitely accomplishing that. Lauren, as I mentioned, you're one of the newer members of the team, your junior transfer. When you were looking into Purdue, what stood out about Purdue as you were looking into your, your options to, to play soccer here? I mean, honestly, like the academics, they speak for themselves. So. Like athletically, just the culture, like coming here and Snoop and Drew have been here for so long. Like they're obviously committed to the program. The team culture is unlike anything I've ever seen. It's so positive and, you know, it's competitive, but at the end of the day, everyone has each other's back and it's just really a contagious environment. Like everyone's pushing each other and everyone's getting better every day. So when I had the opportunity to be a part of that, like I couldn't not take it. So I'm extremely happy with my decision and wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Awesome. Well, well definitely glad to have you here and, and see you contributing on and off the field and be part of this program. So um, off the pitch, you guys both uh, were talking before, you both like to go go-kart driving. Um, <laughs> You know, Lauren, we'll start with you. You were had a little more success uh, out of the family uh, go kart driving in, in Colorado. So, what was, can you 
uh, talk a little bit about that experience? Yeah, so growing up, um, it started when I was three. Me and my brother, we were both in go-kart racing. So every Sunday we were out on the track and um, yeah, just racing all over Colorado. It was a really fun way to grow up. Kind of taught me like competition and just, I don't know, it was just a really fun way to grow up. And um, I think it really contributed to who I am. And um, yeah, it was a really fun way to grow up. And have you, did you, where did you race most recently in terms of on the in the state uh, statewide competitions? Um, I did it till I was like in third or fourth grade, and then it kind of became like I either had to be all in with racing or all in with soccer. And um, my brother stuck with racing, but uh, I made the transition over to stick with soccer. So it's been a while, but um, definitely still a fun hobby that I like to pick up when I'm still back home. Awesome. And Skylar, you were more racing against family members, but that was something your, your grandparents set up for you guys? Yeah, the Patricks are competitive. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's the hair color or just <laughs> being Irish. Who knows? But yeah, uh, my grandpa had a, had a plot of land and uh, made a track out of it. So I, we had about four or five go-karts and we would take them, you know, when we'd get together on like family holidays, 4th of July, and we would race each other. My grandpa got me a little gringo cart. I was still so small because, you know, I'm not the tallest kid on the block, so he had to put a little wooden block so I could reach the pedal, but, you know, I, I always made some good, uh, good finishes, whether it's first or, you know, the little times I did come in second, but... So I was going to ask who among your family members is the fastest, but did you just answer that for us? Yes, yes. And if any of my family's yeah. members disagree, then they just will have to discuss that later on. Okay. Uh, to her family members, I would recommend not messing with Skylar Patrick. Yes. But you probably already know that. Um, Lauren, growing up in Colorado, you also uh, enjoyed going skiing. What's uh, what your favorite memories from skiing? skiing in Colorado? Um, my family really loves Keystone, so um, any chance we got, any free weekend away from soccer, we were always in the mountains skiing, Keystone, Vail, yeah, one of my favorites, so. Awesome, and, and Skylar, when you weren't running track or beating your siblings in go-kart racing, I'm sorry, when you weren't playing soccer or <laughs> beating your siblings in go-kart racing, you were also running track, I spoiled that a little, but how <laughs> much how much did running track help has helped play soccer? Running track helps me a lot with uh, the form. I mean, the running is kind of different when you have a ball at your feet, knee drives a little smaller. So the track definitely helped me with my form. It helped me with my mental toughness. I was in the 400, so that's, in my opinion, one of the tougher races, just because one lap, full sprint, gotta yeah. do. Uh, yeah, so it definitely helped me with my mental toughness. It helps me prepare for Purdue soccer and the fact of like getting in shape, you know, having some my speed be up. So yeah, it definitely was a big help growing up. Awesome. And to close, I know you you uh, you have a dog bear that you wanted to tell tell home, all yeah. your your fans about. Uh, what's what's your dog's dog's name is Bear, but what, what kind of dog is he, and and what do you like about him? Okay, so I'm excited about this one. This is a little shout out to my boy back home. He's my son, my pride and joy. Uh, he's a Pomeranian. He's blue brown, which is a rare fur coat. You know, usually Pomeranians are orange, but he's special. He's a little cutie, has like green hazel eyes. And we basically have the same personality, so he's fun and, you know, lovable, but he also has the, you know, the competitive side that you don't want to mess with. So yeah, I mean, we compete sometimes, whether it's just, you know, kicking the ball around. He's a good defender as well, so it's fine. But yeah, shout out to my boy back home. I love you. I know you watch my games. I'll be home soon. As long as he watch, watches the show, too. Yes, no, he will. I'll okay. make sure of it. All right, good. Glad to have another loyal follower of the Drew Roth Show. But in the meantime, we'll see you both on Thursday in Champaign and then Sunday again at Folk Field. Looking forward to seeing Boilermaker Nation back as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Lauren and Skylar. Thank, Thank you. you.